The charismatic church movement dates to the early 1960s, but with their own TV channels and pastors claiming the power to make people healthy and even rich, they've never been more popular. The man of the cloth in our first story has come up with some imaginative ways of riding the charismatic bandwagon. As Claire will testify, meeting him is quite a revelation. Pentecostal charismatic churches have become popular in South Africa for spontaneous outpourings of the Holy Spirit, singing, speaking in tongues, and divine healing. Jesus, come out! Out! Jesus now! You are delivered. But they also attract so-called prophets who are more interested in prophets. A divine vision in 2010 launched the Emmanuel University of Theology, offering diplomas, bachelors, masters, and doctorates in divinity and theology. These happy graduates were kept by the receiver of that vision, Dr. Professor Chancellor Edward Vandenberg. From a lowly railways manager, he transformed into a Pentecostal archbishop. Unsurprisingly, these miraculous achievements don't all add up, so we paid him a visit at his retirement village in Boxburg. He made me apostle in 2010. And then he Straight got, from God? Straight from God. You became an apostle? Then he said to me, oh, oh, I'm an apostle. So a lot of people don't believe when the Lord talks, he talks to you. It was real. Real, for real. And that empowered me. And, and then he said to me, I want you to uh, train up the end time generals and uplift us, the previous marginalized and disadvantaged in society. This inspired him to write the entire curriculum for the Emmanuel University of Theology, aimed at educating uncertified pastors. With a genuine desire for formal qualifications, they flocked to enroll. I've got 64 campuses in South Africa and 20 internationally. So if I had to go to a campus, I'm not going to see something like Vits. No, no, no. I'm going to see somebody's house. No. You're going to be at the church, or you can be at the house, or where the guy's got the three by three ten check. Okay, I hear you. Okay. 85% of the population are non whites, and they're Pentecostal and Charismatics. So there was a demand, and I was assigned to train these guys up. So you are, you are saving the black people? Yes. You are saving I'm the black I'm a Moses for the black people. You are Moses for black people. And I'm the one that I know I will go to the heavens. Okay. I'm not going to miss because Moses made mistakes. I don't make mistakes in that sense. I'm not prepared to sacrifice my anointing and, and my position. I've got a calling from God. Does it not sound arrogant when you say you are the Moses for black people? Don't you think it could sound arrogant? No, they see it as, as a benefit because somebody must take so them out of people, the shambles. So black people see you I'm as not saying, quote, black, I say non-whites. Okay, so people I'm, of uh, color love it when you say that you are their Moses. I'm, I'm their Moses to lead them out of this situation where they've never been recognized, they never have got something, and so we've got thousands of churches in South Africa with leaders that are not qualified. But is he leading them to the promised land or up the garden path? Vandenberg himself is not qualified because he studied at Therapon University, a bogus online college in the U.S. Virgin Islands. I started with my bachelor's, my master's. During and, that time? And DTH and a double D. And yeah, during that time and in 2010, I was a, a PhD man. But this long list of qualifications is worthless. And as for Emmanuel University, it was never registered with the Department of Higher Education and Training and is also listed as a bogus college. What the Emmanuel University was doing was awarding diplomas and degrees in theology to students. That's illegal, but even worse was the use of the word university. The legislation doesn't provide for private higher institutions to call themselves universities. Dr. Shahida Esak is the director of registrations who laid charges with the police last year. For the illegal awarding of a doctoral degree, and the person charged was Mr. E. A. Vandenberg. Can he call himself no, a professor? No, he cannot call himself a professor, even registered private higher in institutions cannot confer professorships. It's not allowed. Mrs. Isaac sent me a letter and that I must close the campuses down. I said I will maintain the head office. 
I've put 10 million into this business, my pension. And I said, I'm not going to let it go for nothing. So, unable to pass through the eye of a needle, he simply changed the name from university to institute and carried on trading. Our franchise, so the Manual University of Theology is, is, a, is a franchise. Franchising itself is illegal even with registered private institutions. It's not allowed. And so he's obviously seen a market in the religious sphere and he's seen the desperation and he's seen the ignorance and he is basically capitalizing on that. We went undercover to Emanuel Institute's Heidelberg campus to inquire about the fees. The franchisees introduced themselves as Dr. Johan and Dr. Lee. Thank you. So it's about 6,000 rand a year for the first year. Second year is also six, third year six. You can do it in 10 consecutive payments, like 600. It is accreditation overseas. So we are recognized and we're recognized through software in South Africa. But the truth will set you free. The South African Qualifications Authority verifies and registers all learning achievements in South Africa. They do not recognize any qualifications offered by Emmanuel. Like everyone else, they need to be part of the quality assurance regime. Um, and this is really so that the public can trust the integrity of the qualification itself. Our legislation in South Africa requires that all programs that lead to qualifications must be registered on the NQF. CEO Nadia Starr explains the NQF, or National Qualifications Framework, is a system that records all education levels approved by the quality councils. Emmanuel's programs don't pass muster. In terms of what I've seen uh, on the website, those qualifications are not registered on the NQF. But Emmanuel's website falsely claims that they are. When you've got um, a program that is offered and at the bottom it said NQF4, what are you saying to those people who are it, trying to apply is, to a program? Those are 120 credits. But those are not recognized by SACWA, are they? No, they get endorsed by them. They're endorsed by SACWA? Yeah. They SACWA moderators, assessors, and some of them become partners with us. So these guys are SACWA, they got stamps. So our programs are stamped. Who knows what stamps they're collecting, but they're not SACWAs. I don't know the people that he refers to, but anyone working outside of the system, it would seem to me wouldn't have the mandates to make uh, certain decisions. So for those people that have gone through a process that is not really legitimate, uh, their qualifications wouldn't be recognised. So what do you do when the South African Qualifications Authority doesn't register the qualifications you're dishing out? Well, if you're a self-appointed professor like Eddie Vandenberg, you don't let that ruin your business plan. You simply create your own qualifications authority, the CTQA. Christian Theology Quality Assurance was registered by Vandenberg in 2018 at this address in Boxburg. It also houses a sex shop, a gambling lounge and a bottle store en route to the land of milk and honey liqueur. So what's CTQA's job? They look after the accreditation of the programs, and then when people do RPL, they look of if they've got the... So you create the program, and then you also make sure that the, your own program is verified and accredited? No, that, that is our teachings. The, 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 the CTQA is to look at the Christian theology. But the Christian theology NQF. that they are looking at is no, yours. No, they look at the NQFs. It's yours. It's the programs that you've written. The programs are out. So the organization that you've created is the C2QA, is the organization that then verifies the programs that you wrote. That was the initial thing and said we need accreditation so, because I was asked what are you going to do with the SACWA. We showed the CEO one of the qualification forms issued by CTQA. Essentially what he's done is taken the structure and even some of the wording of our qualifications from our national qualifications register and essentially appropriated it for, for content that is not quality assured. And in fact, as even the, the preamble and, and some of the sections are in fact very much a copy and paste of our structure. This is the evidence that he has usurped the functions of SACWA, which is a statutory regulatory body established in terms of the NQF Act. It wouldn't be fair for me to say someone is mentally unstable or not okay up there, but this is fraud.
Yet, Prof. Edward refuses to acknowledge that Emmanuel's diplomas and degrees are not worth the paper they copied and pasted on. That is not a registered mm. or a recognized qualification mm. that you are handing out. No, I, I, I'm not saying so. You don't so. agree with that? No. Talk about turning a blind eye to a burning bush. It's like me starting the Derek Watts Dance Academy or the Carte Blanche University of Sweetness and Light. Sign up now and I'll get you a doctorate by Easter. Hmm? And once you're a doctor, you can become a bishop. So how many bishops have you ordained? I've, I've done 10, 12, 12 bishops, of which say six as, as archers and six others. I was ordained as a, or consecrated as a bishop. That's under the South African Bishops' Council, Pentecostal Bishops' Council. I was the, 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 the visionary of that. Are you Church registered with SA Council of Churches? No. Why? Because they're Trinitarians. Instead, he created the South African Christian Religious Council. So the what SA Religious Council of Churches is also your organization? That's my NPO. That's your NPO. To make sure that we can ordain and appoint the pastors. Is that NPO registered in South Africa? In South Africa. Is that recognized? Yeah. But the NPO certificate he supplied is fake. We checked with the Department of Social Development and this NPO number actually belongs to Sitofini Preschool in the Eastern Cape. It seems this archbishop may be an arch fraudster. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.